Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. It feels like it's been so long since I've done one of these, but uh, it's just been a couple of weeks. So welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I have a few new subscribers, so I appreciate you being here. Uh, if you're live with me, let me know that you're here with me. Uh, we're going to have some fun tonight. We're going to do quite a bit of sketching, I think, tonight. And uh, this is going to be kind of different than our normal uh, routine a bit. I'm hoping that we can keep this class to an hour, but we'll kind of see how that works out with our sketching. Uh, let's see. So tonight we're going to be doing monochromatic painting. That means we're going to be using one color to paint tonight and you can pick any color that you would like to use. Uh, this class, I've been wanting to do a monochromatic class, but this class was inspired by Jorge Redondo, who is an artist. Uh, and I think you can find him on Instagram at Gato Tanto. Check it out. Um, I'll show you his image and you'll kind of see where the inspiration for this class came from. Uh, he does a lot of houses and houses on stilts and I thought that was really fun and thought it might be really fun for kids to create their own kind of playhouse or house of their dreams or maybe this could be your art studio of your dreams. So we'll be doing a little sketching tonight. Uh, this was the picture that I did for the promo for this. Uh, the image that I'm going to sketch tonight is going to be different. Uh, and you can access the links to these sketches. This is what they look like. One is a large one and this one's a small one, but they both print out on eight and a half by 11. So you'll find those links in chat or you'll find the links below this video as it's playing. And you can grab those and print them off and you can trace them if you like, or you can sketch along with me. I'm going to be drawing tonight and, uh, kind of going through my how I draw things too that you might find helpful for you. Uh, and if you are imaginative, you can make your own little house that you, you want to do. This really is a great exercise for uh, monochromatic painting. And I will be using uh, a color that I made. Let's go to our supplies really quick. First and foremost, I guess I should introduce myself. If you are new here, my name is Paige. I'm the chief pixel pusher and paint brusher over at Gumption. And I also have these classes over at the Pocatello Arts Center. So if you're tuning in from there, you can also get those links in the description next to this video. As far as supplies go, you just need a watercolor. It doesn't matter what brand, doesn't matter what color. Uh, probably not yellow, just because uh, that's not gonna show up as well. But on this painting, I used an indigo that I, a paint that I made. And tonight I'm going to be using a dark purple paint that I made. So if you want to use opera pink, you can do that. Uh, it looks like our friend Jorge used hot pink for his house on stilts. And so, uh, and it's beautiful. And I will show you that. So you can use any color that you want. You may want to have handy a hair dryer in case you get a little wet too wet there you might need to dry your painting and uh, occasionally I have to do that here on air too so uh, and I think besides paper towels that's probably all you need for this class so uh, let's get started hey okay so as you can see this is what I drew uh, early on for this promo for this class I want to show you uh, Jorge's what Jorge had for his so this is where I got this idea you can see this is Gato Tonto on Instagram and you could see he used opera pink for his building and it really works he may have included some red in there but I think it is one color so that is what we're going to work for tonight. This is also a kind of a fun exercise for kids. Uh, I think this would be a great drawing assignment for kids uh, to get their imaginations going. I, I specifically thought of one nephew who likes to draw a lot and thought he might really enjoy this. So I'm going to replicate this. I'm not going to trace it. I'm going to sketch it for those of you at home who may not have printers. Uh, that you can sketch along with me and you can include whatever you want in your house. That is up to you. 
if you're tuning in here for the first time, let me know you're here. If you're an oldie but a goodie, let me know you're here too. And we'll get started. If you have any questions, go ahead and throw them into chat as well. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. So we'll switch our overhead camera here to what we have our palette cam here. So when I start mixing paint, you can kind of see how much water I use. Um, but first we're gonna, we gotta sketch this guy out. So I know I'm kind of marking the top here where he's, the top's gonna be and the bottom and kind of just a rough, I'm gonna do a rough kind of overall shape. So I stay within my area. You know, sometimes when you're drawing, you get off the page. Well, this is a good way to avoid that, to kind of rough in your shape here. And I kind of did this on, let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five layers. Again, if you don't want to sketch this out, go ahead and grab the link that is in the chat and you can trace this if you want to. I just was not as inspired by my first drawing. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna sketch a new one and everybody can download that. If you're not familiar with one of these, this is a kneaded eraser and these are great for watercolor paper because they are not destructive. feels like it's been quite a while since I have had a class with you guys so I hope that you have continued painting and are doing well next week our class will be in uh, my patreon and we won't be on live on YouTube but we will be the following week you can always check I have gumption.com and check the calendar there and uh, you'll see uh, what class is coming up next. So here I'm just kind of putting in this fence. It's a little bigger than my sketch here, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanted to create something that was kind of fun that I thought, yeah, if I were gonna have a cool clubhouse, what would it look like? I think this is kind of one of those assignments that can just keep on uh, growing, you know what I mean? Just have a lot of fun with it. So I'm just sketching in my rocks here. I want to make sure I got the base down and then I'm just kind of following this shape that I started with. I had much straighter lines, so mine might be a little cockeyed, but that's okay. We're looking, we're not looking for perfection here. So I see this lines up here. And I'm sketching in this guy. Some have funky windows, some have funky doors, do whatever you want. And I highly recommend that you check out um, Jorge's work over on Instagram. He's a very talented guy and I do not personally know him but uh, found his work very inspiring and pretty fun. Let's see actually I'm gonna move this door over a little bit. And again both of those images that are in the uh, chat the links that are there for download. There's a full size uh, paper that's an eight and a half by 11 and a smaller one that prints out 
on an eight and a half by 11, but it's just, it's this size. I thought for me, it might be a little quicker as I'm teaching you guys to do the small one. So you can see that I have done this overall shape. That's really gonna be helpful to keep me in the line, so to speak. And so whenever you're drawing, I recommend starting with the big shapes first and then whittling it down from there. So we started with an overall shape and then kind of can do these layers and they'll fit right in. And I thought for this project, what better than a little lookout turret? Can you imagine if you were a kid and you had one of these? It'd be super cool. So this is also a great assignment to just show you, you know, you don't have to have a ton of stuff or a ton of colors to paint something that is fun and uh, creates a mood. You know, we're going to be using one color tonight and it all depends on how dark it gets, depends on how much water we use. And so this is also a great assignment for water control and learning how to do that in watercolor. So I appreciate your patience and sketching along. I know some of my viewers like to uh, sketch along. They don't, um, they don't trace. So we'll just spend a few moments sketching this out here. Curious to know what your your favorite ideal place would be that you would have what you'd have at your clubhouse if you could. And see, I can just d gently dab with this kneaded eraser and it easily removes pencil. So this might be a little more complex than what we normally draw, but I think it's a good exercise here. And another thing I should mention before we get too far along, we've been having some difficulties with our internet today. So if you're finding that um, I, our stream is going out of focus or is kind of spotty, let me know. I don't want to lose you here. We've really struggled with it today, so not sure what's going on. So in, in my space here, I've got this giant garage door for this area. Be like a patio or something fun. If you need to use a ruler, do so. So I've got a few balconies here. I'm 
some ra safety railings. <laughs> and if you can draw this uh, yourself with your uh, brush, you can do that too. And here on mine, I have this nice kind of zen uh, bench area that you can overlook the great outdoors, have a little quiet time. Festive banner here. So oftentimes, uh, you know, you drag your hand across your pencil and it smears it. Well, if you needed an eraser, that's kind of handy. This guy wound up being a little shorter, but let's add our trees in here. And some of these little details and then we are going to get to painting here directly. These guys are some stairs that are going up. Okay. Oh, I need to include my awesome chimney here. Am I missing? Well, that looks good enough to me. So, I learned a really great trick here recently with these, uh, excuse me, my uh, kneaded eraser. And you take it and you rub it between your hands and kind of make it long. And then you can roll it across your paper and pick up excess lead. Pretty cool trick. Okay. So now, hopefully you're ready if you're painting along with me and uh, we'll get to painting here. So you can see, this is a really kind of a dark purple that I'm using tonight and I'm just gonna mix it up with quite a bit of water I've got this little, this little guy here. Get some water in it. And because it is handmade paint, not commercial paint, it takes a little bit to get it dark. Now I wet it uh, beforehand to see if I could get it here. Now for this first go with the paint, I'm gonna dilute this a little bit so you can see it's pretty diluted and should be pretty light. We can test it over here on this page. 
So that's a pretty light wash. And so this is what we're gonna use first. So I'm gonna get a smaller brush. And this is a six, size six brush. And I think this will kind of work for me. And I am just gonna start painting all over these houses. I think I'm gonna start from the top down. So I'm gonna fill in my trees. And my roof line here. And you can see, I can still see my pencil marks uh, there, which I'm glad about. And this, these uh, brushes, they have a nice point there so you can bring them vertical and get into these tight spots. If you're working larger, you probably want to use a larger brush. And it's kind of like when we do glazes and or uh, gradients backgrounds, we're just moving that bead around. And I'm working pretty fast here. And I'm just going to cover all these windows because I'm going to make them dark. And just keep moving that bead down. We'll extend this tree down. I'm going to hit this roof. Any areas that you want to be a highlight, you can leave them alone. Leave the paper there and that will leave that white of the paper. to go back over here never fails there's always a stray cat hair gonna get my little flag These are just fun because they are lopsided and unique. You can make whatever you want. Probably for kids it's hard to just use one color. But we're going to show that it can have character with one color. So when your brush gets a little dry, Dip it back into your paint. I think I'm actually going to do this whole area here. I'm just getting everything and you if you do this illustration that I have done here tonight you can put whatever you want on your sign okay okay there you go so we've done one swath. Looks like I missed one little piece here. We've got our base color down. Now you can always work wet and wet uh, with watercolor, but uh, we're gonna just kind of layer it tonight. I'm gonna grab this towel here. 
dab off my paintbrush a little. Okay, so that is a nice even start for us. So you might still be painting a little bit, so I'll kind of hang tight here for just a few seconds. And if you're just tuning in, go ahead and let me know that you're here. Say hello in chat. So now, kind of while you guys are still painting, I'm going to um, actually dip into my color and put a little more pigment here in our paint that we're using. So this should be a little bit darker when we go back in to our painting. It's almost dry, but not quite. Here. So I'm going to grab my hair dryer. I'm going to put us on mute and I'm just going to give this a shot of air so we can make sure that it's dry. Okay, so that ought to do it. So we're going to go back in and start darkening areas to help us discern what is what here. And I have this nice skinny long brush, but if you have, uh, you could use probably the tip of a brush like this that's really pointy, or you can use something like this. We'll kind of test both of them out here. So I have my darker pigment and I'm just going to show you here on my page so it looks like it's a darker value. And I'm going to go in and start darkening some of these areas to define them. So I'm going to do under this kind of awning thing I left this part out, so I'm going to paint that in real quick. I'm going to go into my tree here a little bit. And you can see that already looks darker and is start to give, starting to give us a little bit more detail. You can just go over your paint where you've painted before. If you need more pigment, you can dip into your pigment. Let's see, hopefully you can see that on my camera, my palette cam over here. So most of my windows are dark, so I'm going to darken all these areas first. And I'm going to define my garage door a little bit. This actually carries all the way down here onto this walkway, so we'll carry that. And 
And really with monochromatic painting, we're dealing with more pigment, layering, more or less water. Right on, Jan. It's awesome to see you here. That's great. This way you can kind of see what we're doing. And then uh, when you want to start from the beginning on your own, you can. I'm glad to see you here. This is a fun assignment because you can use whatever color you like the most and test it out that way. You could always use this too in plain air if you want to use a pen and a color of paint. This is a good assignment to do that. Let's see, I'm going to use the skinny brush to do this window. And you can see how much precision you can get with a really skinny brush, so I recommend whether you're just starting out or you're seasoned pro, you should have a good, some good liner brushes. And I think I just put my finger in this window. But that's okay. We can we can use that later in some way. Okay, so then we have this great big area down below that is dark. And I think I want to make it even darker. So I'm going to put a little water in here and try to get quite a bit more pigment in here. Okay. This is that dark do not enter area, right? For those of you who are really like pen and ink as well, and you like using black ink, this is a great secondary uh, set of tools that you can use to do that kind of work. And this dark edge also outlines, it kind of defines this sign here too because it's butting up against it. All right, so it's starting to kind of look like something here. So this is where we have our darker areas in here. We can go back over those. We can give areas different tone. So maybe I want to make this awning a little bit darker. I can do another layer on top. So it will stand out, you know it's separate. And maybe this house. So you can see by layering the same color and starting off light and moving into the dark, you can start adding value and depth to your little painting. I'm gonna go in and kind of Darken these trees a little bit. Here I'll probably keep this soft uh, light edge a bit. I may have to go back into this dark area. 
But it's about having patience and layering. Maybe this rock can be a little bit darker. Maybe this door can be a little bit darker. We'll make our little flag darker too. You can keep keep on keep layering here. And I don't want to forget that we have some greenery here. Let's kind of dab it in there. Okay, so this is a good start. Um, I am going to go in and start doing a little detail in this. And I'll use my more intense color here. I'm dabbing this off a little bit on this paper over here. So I don't have maybe some drips that I may not want. And I can go and add some details. So maybe I want to get the, the boards that are here in this roof line. Yeah, if you need an assignment for your kids to keep them busy before they go into school, this would be a great one for them to do one afternoon. And you can add texture like you might add wood texture and this brush allows me to make these little lines oh can you hear my cat Lucy she's wanting in whenever I use uh, a liner brush and have to steady myself. I always find myself throwing out that pinky to get a little leverage. Just for the record, Lucy is okay. <laughs> she likes to cuddle in the evening. You can also outline some of these things with a pen too, if you like that style of working. 
that since we're doing monochromatic here, little stairs. Trying to straighten up that line a little bit. These little squiggly lines to represent wood. And I find sometimes I really enjoy getting a really light color to wash over another color to do texture like this because it's very subtle but effective. Let's see. This guy actually was supposed to extend there. So just by using one color, you can create a lot of different values. And a skinny brush can help you draw there. Actually, I can make him just a window a little bit darker. So he might have a little bit of pigment here. Oftentimes, uh, watercolor dries lighter and so you might have to do a few layers Oops, I might not be able to paint a straight line here. Might be a little off. Our shutters. And also by using different textures, depending on how close together your brush strokes are, will also determine uh, your value as well. So we can start out with something looking like this. And if we put lines that are closer together, that's gonna change its value a little bit. So that's another way create value with one color. What I love about these skinny brushes is that you can really make a few strokes. Convey your space.
what questions do you guys have for me as we are moving along here? Or what wins have you had this week? Even just being COVID free <laughs> is a win. Also, tell me what kind of classes you guys want to see in the future on this channel. I'm always open to suggestions. Next week's class will be uh, in Patreon, so I won't have a class here next week, but I will the following week. And anything that you want to explore, technique you want to try something you have questions about. Okay, let's see. I might add a little more color here. Let's try to add a little more dark pigment down here. So you can see this was, there is a lot of pigment here. And you definitely want to just dip it back in your pigment here. You don't want to dip your brush in water. Just keep hitting that pigment. And you can see just how dark you can get by just using one color. I'm going to mix a little bit more dark pigment. Let's see if I can find a bit of a smaller brush here. And we can keep adding dark pigment in here, maybe this area because we can balance it out a little. And then I need to put in my Little walkway. And I can just use my brush to add a thicker area there by pressing down on my bristles a little bit.
And when you're drawing, your line weight can determine what uh, looks like it's in front of something else. So a thicker line weight is for something that's closer. And a thinner line weight is for things that are farther away. Yeah, see how nicely, how dark that is? That's nice. So I'm going to extend these windows because they I smudged them with my finger. But see, that's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Uh, it's nothing magical, but uh, it's definitely fun to challenge yourself in this way. And see what what you can do. Contrast always makes things look more interesting. You don't want things the same value because that's not very interesting, kind of boring. And you can still do all the things that you do with regular watercolor with uh, this as well, like lifting pigment. Use all your same old techniques like salt. So I challenge you to, if you're hanging out and you have time by yourself this week, to paint something in your house, just an object with one color and see how it goes. That, I think that is probably one of the best ways to kind of get used to uh, watercolor and see how you can use it is by drawing and painting something small that's not intimidating and just kind of keep doing that and by using different techniques you will improve your skills Seed down a little. I may have lost my rocks here a little bit.
I feel like this door needs to be darker here. But you see this light color that we first washed on, it really looks very light or whitish, so to speak. Uh, it seems like it's the lightest color on our spectrum, even though it's faintly purple. It is our lightest value. Maybe we'll darken this guy up too. So you can keep playing with that. Hopefully you had fun with this assignment and you thought it was useful. If you have questions for me, you can go ahead and put them down below. A um, couple of reminders that next week I will be live on Patreon. I will be returning to YouTube the following week. So just keep your eyes peeled on social media or this channel and you'll be notified when I'm going live. It's always on a Thursday and at 7 p.m. Thanks to any of you that are new followers, just tuning in or new subscribers. Thanks for being here and I hope that you're getting value out of this. Uh, I would like to thank my Patreon subscribers for supporting this channel and uh, helping make these classes possible. So thanks Laurel and Colin for your support. Uh, if you want to learn more about me and my artwork, you can check it out on those links up there and throw your comments down below. Thanks, Colin. Kind of a fun little house. Uh, definitely something that uh, you could continue to explore endlessly, much like trees and scenery imagery. So. I challenge you to use it in some of your paintings, sir. Uh, what else do I have? Um, if you have wins for this week, go ahead and put them down below. And I think that might be it for this class. It looks like we came in just a barely over an hour. Uh, so keep drawing, keep painting. Uh, and if you have any comments or questions, you go ahead and leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer those. So I hope you have a great week. Check me out on uh, my other videos on YouTube and I will see you soon. Ah, hey Laurel, it's great to see you. Happy birthday to Joe. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, and it was a little different. So I'm curious to see what uh, you guys drew. You'll have to, sh you'll have to show me later. So, okay guys, well, I'm wrapping that up. I appreciate you being here and I will see you soon.